Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel, and that is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. And today I am here to pose the question, should you read the Scorch Continent Trilogy by Megan E. O'Keefe? And the short answer of that is yes. Yes, you should. But if you're needing further convincing, stick around. Let me explain. One, the trilogy is finished. The trilogy consists of Steal the Sky, Break the Chains, and Inherit the Flame. And yes, I only own the second book. I'm not sure how that happened, but I definitely want the other two as well. This is a fantasy series set in a desert climate that has steampunk elements and magic. Let me explain. In this first book, we start in Aransa, which is a city in the middle of the desert, and it is situated at on an oasis type of location. In this world, power called Selium is mined out of what they call fire mounts or volcanoes. In order to mine the Selium, you need to have what they call a cell sense or a gift to sense a cell sensitivity. Anybody with this sense thus becomes property of the government and gets shipped to go work in these fire mounts. Depending on where you live, this isn't necessarily a bad thing. It can give you some prestige, it can give you some, you know, a better life, but at the same time, it can be very dangerous. And explosions happen and people can die. We follow three main points of view in this first book. We follow Deaton Handing, who is a con man by his own description. He is a lord and heir for another city. He had a very strong cell sense and while working the mines, like I said, it doesn't matter what position you are in. If you have this sense, you are taken to go work to find the Selium. There is an explosion and he feels guilty that he caused it. Due to the grief and trauma of this, his cell sense has disappeared. And so now he is traveling the world just existing. We also follow the perspective of Pelkaya, who is indigenous to this desert. And I believe her, if I'm remembering right, the people is the Katarai. She has a very strong cell sense to the fact that it gives her other abilities, such as she can change her appearance. And she wants revenge on the city and on this other government empire that overshadows the city because her son, who had been taken to work in the mines, was killed. And this was somebody that she felt very close to because he was like her. The third point of view we have is Ripka, who is an officer in the city watch, working up towards a promotion. She's hoping to one day become the warden of the city. So that's like the top government official. And she's one of the first people to notice that something is not right in her city. Now these three points of view obviously are going to clash and have to come to some decisions. I'm not going to spoil the book for you guys. I'm going to make you go read it. But for the interesting elements of the story, the world is very present. Again, it's a desert society and the way Aransa is set up, if you're a criminal, you have two options. You can be executed or you can walk the black, as they call it, which means you're gonna go be put outside the gates of the city to walk the desert and without any protection or food and you're going to die. You're gonna die of dehydration before you ever starve to death. So it is a very brutal kind of fantasy world but at the same time there are moments of kindness that you can see how people of all stations can live in this world and it's not just the rich are preying upon the poor people. It's a typical city society where you have those who are poor, you have the merchants or the middle class, and you have the rich. As I mentioned before, in this world they mine selium, but what do they use it for? Well, the people who have some cell sensitivity can use it as gifts as well, but they also use it to manipulate airships, which is how I got first interested in Steal the Sky because, yeah, I, I, I thought it was steampunk. At first, when I picked it up, the type of gas they use to power these ships is selium, and a cell sensitive can be used to 
maneuver the ship. So you need somebody who is a cell sensitive to help fly the ship more. So like if you need to like let out the cellium to kind of bring the ship down, change the weights of things. Not everybody who works on the ships have to be cell sensitive. So something that Megan O'Keefe does really well is it, each of the books takes place in a different setting within the world. However, the overall plot is connected to the first book. All the events of the first book wrap up in the third book, but each book is a story unto itself. So you don't feel, how about this? She's not cliffhangering you. You don't have a cliffhanger to be like, oh, what's gonna happen next? You, you are left with questions, as you should, in order to get you to the next book, but you, had a, you have a story. Something that O'Keefe does really well with this series is her villain is not like the mustache twirling, just evil villain. You get nuance and you get politics. And I really enjoyed it. It has more of a soft magic system as in there aren't hard and fast rules of what you can do with the cell sensitivity, but that's okay because we're, fi we're, we're figuring out alongside the main characters and that's always fun. Or at least it's fun for me. I mean, just to conclude, if you're looking for a fantasy that is set in a different environment with different politics and interactions, but yet still pretty familiar to what you probably have read before, this is a great book. It's great if you like characters, and it's great if you like your setting to be part of your, your book. Please pick this series up, and when you do, let me know that you're reading it. If you have read it, please let me know down below and let me know what you thought. Thank you and have a great day.